This is modern homesteading. I don't always drive fire engines, but when I do, I drive 331. <laughs> never know what you're going to get on the Wrangler Star Channel. So today, something a little bit different. Many of you guys know that I'm a volunteer firefighter and we live in a very uh, rural area and so that means we do a lot of wildland fire. We have a lot, a lot of high potential of having wildland fires out here. The conditions uh, for wildland fire are really high, uh, starting earlier than they usually do. We actually had a, a fire uh, that we got put out uh, just a couple days ago, and we're on high alert now uh, just because of conditions of wind and just the dryness and the way everything's drying out. So there was a small, um, there's a small fire. Uh, we have a small station not too far from here that hasn't been manned for years because there just hasn't been any volunteers up in this area. As I said, we're pretty far out. So uh, this here issue, or this uh, engine right here, is uh, essentially uh, uh, been kind of taken over by me because I live close to the station. So it's pretty well specced out for uh, structural firefighting as well as wildland firefighting. However, I'm not uh, real familiar with everything on it because I, 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 as I said, I've just kind of taken it over. So today we're going to pull, uh, go into the cabinets and kind of check out the wildland side of it. We're going to stretch out some hose and, and pump a little bit of water. I'll kind of show you the process, how to run the pump, slight, you know, just kind of some basics and some of the forestry equipment that we'll carry on that. And then when we're finished, we'll stop at one of our uh, big uh, reserve tanks and then fill it up. You know, we don't have any fire hydrants out here. And the only water that we have to rely upon is what we can carry in our engines and in our tenders and what we have strategically placed in big underground and above the ground storage tanks um, up in this area. So let's dig into it and pump a little water and I think you'll enjoy it. So come on along. So this is the engineer's cabinet. Usually the engineer's cabinet is close to the pump panel, which is right there to the left. And this is where we'll keep our hoses and fittings. So what we have in here is kind of a mix of wildland and structural stuff, but we'll just pull out our forestry stuff today and take an inventory of what we have, put it up to pressure, make sure we don't have any major leaks or any damage, and that everything is good to go. All right, so we'll kind of take an inventory here. This is our, this is our pretty much our entire wildland loadout right here. So what do we have got? We've got inch and a half, and we've got one inch. We've got two different sizes of wildland hose. We've got uh, a 50 and a 100, and I've got another 100 out there. So what do we got? 350, 350 feet of inch and a half. From there, uh, we'll convert to the forestry hose, the single jacketed one inch forestry hose. It looks like we got 300 feet of that and a few appliances. All this I'll explain to you here in a little bit. We've got um, a T here. We use these uh, quarter turn fittings which are nice because they're the same on both ends so there's no male and female and uh, the reason why we use these is because we interface with the state DNR and they have uh, full-time fire crews and we work with those guys hand in hand. So uh, and that's what they have, so that's what we have, so we can use everything together. So we've got adapters and we've got a T there. We've got two forestry nozzles. You can see right there, these are adjustable. So you can see from eighth to three sixteenths to quarter, five sixteenths, then full open. It's just simply a, uh, I'll show you here, just simply you can see different size orifices here for the inch and a half line. And there's two of them here, so they're just they're just twisted together. A um, few adapters from inch and a half to one inch, and then we've got a hose clamp right there. And it looks like we've got a few extra bushings, rubbers that go in here, in case well one falls out or one gets damaged. And then a pack for kind of set up for a progressive hose lay and a clamp. So here's what we're going to do. Here's how it works. We've got a pump panel right there. We've got a thousand gallons of water on there, and We'll simulate that we have a fire down yonder, about 300 feet or so. Demonstrate how 
I would do this if I was working by myself, which is highly likely uh, that I will be up here, initial attack, if we get a fire in this area uh, by myself. So I need to be really efficient at this, and I need to know what I'm doing. Um, if we can catch a fire in time, it won't get away, and we could save lives and, and property. So let's get it laid out, see how fast I can do it, and kind of demonstrate a one-man progressive hose lay. So I've got my engineer's cabinet, everything set up the way I like it. So let's see, under time conditions, how long it takes to drive in. We'll simulate we're driving into the anchor point and produce or create 300 feet of wet line and attack uh, the head, fire's head at 300 feet of way, or 300 feet from the engine. Firecom, 331 in route with one.
Oh, I got you all wet. So, that's 300 feet of uh, progressive hose lay. What that means is, is coming into an anchor point with the engine and creating a wet line from the engine all the way out. You could go a lot further, but just as a training, <clears throat> a way to train, that's typically uh, what I'm going to run into. And that's a way you can do it very quickly uh, by yourself. Uh, you can definitely speed that up, cut that time way down if you have two people, but um, we're spread pretty thin up here. And that's the way it is. So uh, you kind of have to, I, I, I like to train that way. Uh, so I, there's no surprise. If I go out on this tonight or tomorrow, um, I, I'm familiar with it. I know what works, what doesn't work. And you learn by doing. So also, uh, when you train, you always train with all your gear on. So your uh, full PPE, helmet, gloves, boots, everything that you would wear on the Fireland. Because you need to find out what things work and what things don't. Uh, and you can speculate and you can look at yourself in the mirror and you can try all the stuff on all you want in the, in the home but uh, when you get out in the field you really figure out what works and what doesn't work so um, thought you would enjoy that kind of a uh, interesting wildland firefighting is is my passion and I am so excited to be back involved with it well that was exciting exciting for me anyway so you found yourself Find yourself living in a rural area and don't have much going on in your life? Well, I've got a suggestion for you. Why don't you contact your local fire department and volunteer your time and become a volunteer firefighter? Because your community needs you. Uh, volunteer firefighting is uh, a great way to serve your community, to meet friends, to do something with your life that is um, exciting and honorable. I think it is. That's it. <laughs> I'll, uh, I have nothing else to say. Thank you for watching and we will see you guys on the, on the next video.